Brandon University. How are you today? Great that you guys are here. Happy Wednesday, or as we like to also refer to it as uh, Friday Eve 2, because it's two more days. Anyway, hope you guys are doing great. What is up? We got Scott Hussey right here with GuideTracks.co in the hot seat, and he's about to come on board to tell us more about how we can better integrate the loops of what we're doing within our worship and also, what are some of the worries and struggles that you go through as a worship team by trying to integrate awesome tools like this? As you know, last month we had Matt McCoy on. Today we're having Scott Hussey on. And we're getting different perspectives of you know, how you can better maximize loops and what you can do within your own worship team. So we hope you guys are paying attention because we have a lot that's coming through and a lot that's going to happen today. So what we want to do also is ask you guys if you would uh, swipe and invite as you're watching on Facebook Live right now and let everybody know what's going on. Share this out because we got some awesome things. And plus, Scott's going to give us some goodies of what to point you guys to to get some uh, fresh ideas for your tracks and how to get that stuff rolling. And um, let's go ahead and begin. So glad that you guys are here. Uh, if you guys would also uh, pay attention to the link that's above inside the uh, the video window because I got some a link that will take you back to WTTU.co and uh, just to tell you a little bit about that and about me my name is Brandon Dempsey and this is Worship Team Training, Worship Team Training University. This is the first time that you're watching the broadcast. Hey thanks so much for jumping in and we ask that you would share it out with your friends. Also visit us at worshipteamtraining.com you can see our workshops that we do for worship teams just like you one-to-one -one hands on training with your worship team on a Friday and Saturday. We also have an extensive leadership development mentoring program that you can check out. That's worshipteentraining.com, both workshops and mentoring. And we want to say hello to all of our listening playback followers on Spreaker and also iHeartRadio, iTunes. Thanks so much for coming in. And we do live broadcasts like this now which is called our brown bag special. That's what you're watching right now. This will happen once a month. We'll have a guest on like Scott Hussey, Matt McCoy, whoever. We have some guests already lined up for 2018. In fact, 2018 is getting packed. And I'll just say that Wednesdays are gonna be rocking once a month, just like the Tuesday shows that we do at 11 a.m. also every week. So we were without a show yesterday and I missed you guys, but thanks so much for coming back today. So let's get this party started, shall we? Uh, let's get going with guidetracks.co. Uh, today we are talking about loops and we're talking about how we can better integrate this stuff. You can go to the website that's listed right there in the web link on this video to find out more about guidetracks. You can just go to guidetracks.co, read up more please about what Scott does and uh, his awesome track making. So you can see that I got my device right here. Also, we got Scott and we got a split screen going on. So let's go ahead and say hello to this fellow right here. Scott Hussey, what's up, brother? Hey, how's it going? It's great to have you today, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. That's great. Yeah, so we're going to do this. We want to talk about the loops and we want to ask you guys too, uh, you guys watching and listening playback, you got questions, go ahead and comment and let us know, just put that into the window so we can see what's up. The same thing if you're watching playback or listening live, it doesn't matter. We're gonna to get to your questions, okay? So go ahead and do that, please, so we can follow you. So you got this right here. Uh, we're gonna be talking about this program here that we call Worship Band. But first, Scott, we wanna hear from you. Tell us about guidetracks.co and what you guys do. What we do is we build multi tracks for a small, you know, for all actually all size churches, but primarily our biggest focus is with small churches, churches that are just getting started off, whether it be church plants or whatnot, that are really trying to build and grow. Uh, but again, creating this tool that allows uh, worship teams to really kind of grow in their excellence and um, their delivery, um, being able to capture. Um, a worship experience that truthfully, you know, us being the Americanized church, I mean, people come to church, they're really wanting to kind of go through the experience and the sense of what it is they listen to. And this is a great tool to be able to do that. Right, indeed. Awesome. And then also, uh, tell us about the app that we're seeing right here in the screen. So this app 
is it's called Worship Song Band. Um, there's many, you know, there's many different multi-track players that are out there. This is one that we use. Um, all of our tracks are actually um, on their library with them. Um, the great thing about this particular app that I love about it, I've used um, several different ones. And the thing that I probably enjoy the most about this one that kind of makes it uh, unique from any other of the multiplayers that are out there is that um, it's got a great function that you can use amongst your team. So if you look at what you've got set up right now, there's two views. What you're showing us right now in the view is the multi-track itself. Um, okay. And so this is allowing you to adjust your mix of all of the stems of the song. Um, so basically when the song, when the song plays, you've got every track broken down, which allows you to either mute them, mix them, um, however you need, um, where, and that is where the, the musical tracks themselves, um, when you set this up through your system, it goes through the right channel because there's a stereo channel that comes out of your headphone jack. And so that's actually two channels. A lot of people think of it as just one, but it's actually two. And so the instrumentation all goes down the right channel, which can go to the house mix. Um, and then the left channel is going to be your click and your cues, which will go to your in-ear mix that allow your band to be able to hear and follow. Um, so that's in this view. But one of the fancy things that I like about this is there is also the chord view. So if you click up there up to the top right, you put it into the chord view. Now when you play the song, you'll notice at the top um, that you've got your kind of your, your time bar that goes across that shows you where you're going in, in the song. But as that moves along, the chord chart changes to it. Yeah, I love that. It wow. is a sweet function because I'll tell you what's really nice is you can literally control that from the stage and you're able to, and it goes with the song. And here's what's also awesome about it, Brandon, is yes. that every one of those areas of the song, if you decide in the song you want to go back to that spot, all you do is you click it. Wow. And when it finishes at the phrase, it automatically goes to that spot. Now, here's the other, here's the other sweet piece to this app is that right now you're seeing it to where it's only connected. It's only on one unit. Yeah. When you set it up in your in your service setting, if you use a separate router that which that I highly recommend you want to keep it as like a, a single router that nobody else can really jump on that's really used just for the team. Okay. If you set everybody's iPad on that router, it will automatically connect. You set the main one up as a slate, and it becomes wow. the main. It becomes the main unit. So as the main unit changes. All of your other musicians, their iPads all change at the same time. So they're not having to touch anything. They're not having to worry about it. It wow. keeps up with them, but it's all slaved off of the main one. And I know a lot of that sounds like, man, it's really difficult, but it's really not. Um, in the settings, it's very easy to set that up and to be able to make all your units speak consistently. Sorry about that. I hit Siri. Say that oh, one more time. Say that one more time. Hello, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you need me to pick up? Did you get? Yeah, just uh, you were just finishing explaining. Okay. Um, but it is, man. It's 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 a great tool to use. Um, again, I've used several different types of apps. This has probably been my favorite um, to use because of all the functions that are there. Um, I think the only thing that we're actually talking about trying to kind of change a little bit, and that is the play button to make it a little bit bigger. Um, but otherwise, the layout of it and how it directs, it's so simple to use. Um, and here's what's also nice is that back on the mixer side of it, when you set a mix, it's it will store whatever that mix is until you make any adjustments. So let's say you did like we have Oh Holy Night up right now. Let's say you come back next year to do that for net for the next holiday. When you bring it up, it's going to recall what it is you did last to it. And it stores that in it. So you're not having to reset the settings. Because no one's going to play Oh Holy Night in July, right? Unless if they're doing a Christmas in July drive thing. You know, I mean, 
You know, I have this theory that oh, no. that my actually my uncle uh, brought to me one day. Who he's an, a worship leader from years back, but we were talking about, oh, come let us adore him, and he's like, you know, Scott, honestly. That song is not really just a Christmas song. We make it a Christmas song, True. but truthfully, if you think what it sings lyrically, dude, you could sing it all year long. You could. And I have to say, you actually could. You really could. Awesome. So let's do this. How about we jump into the app? Uh, can you first tell us real quick about what are some of the worries that some worship leaders may have, some bands may have about using tracks within their band? Because it could be... Maybe they don't know how to integrate them. Maybe they're a little bit intimidated by the technology. So can you speak into that a little bit? Yeah. Well, the first thing I want to say getting into that is is bringing the re, really the reality that most people don't understand. It's funny because we had a new uh, team member come on, to, on, on a couple of months ago, and we were talking, and she was brand new to this. And okay. she was like, do people really do this? And I was like, you would be surprised. And I literally had some footage of a show that I had just recently been at that was a Jesus culture show. And so I was, I was on the side of the stage with a buddy of mine who was doing monitor mixes. And I was videoing showing that dude, they're using click tracks through this. Like even the people that a lot of, a lot of the worship teams we admire, what we don't realize is they've been using this tool for years. Right. Some of the ones that we just kind of think they just naturally go with it. How could they do this? But this is actually a tool we've been using. So I say all of that in the sense that um, I've been using this for years. And it's one of those things that you're nervous at first to step into because there's some there's some natural questions that you ask yourself as as a worship leader. One of them is, how do you make... How is the flow of everything going to function this way? Because now all of a sudden you're having to work to a time or to a clock. And one of the things that when I got into it, I had to realize for myself was technically we have a start and an ending point. Those have never changed. Mm -hmm. When we get into a song, we know a tempo that we're really wanting it to be at. The problem is, is that most of the time, based on however our energy is, determines what the pulse or speed of that's going to be. Right. So to have something that actually helps dictate that actually really is a, is a plus. It's just happened to kind of change your way of thinking. And I like to look at it this way. I come from a marching band background, which I know you do as well. <laughs> I admire greatly. Um, there's something to say for that. Because okay. one of the things that you and I had to learn at a very early age, being a part of, of, of those type of bands, is that there's a conductor. There's somebody who orchestrates everything that goes on. Right. And in essence, that is what our click track actually is. Right. It is the conductor to what we're doing. And so I think the problem is that a lot of our worship bands have never We've got so many that have never been introduced or have even seen that. Yeah. And so you have to literally take off that that old hat of thinking. You've got to put on a different hat and realize, okay, I need somebody to help lead this. And that's what that person does. As soon as you can kind of debunk that idea, all of a sudden embracing this tool is a whole lot easier to embrace because now you're realizing there's actually going to be structure and consistency right. to what we do. Right. So, um, right. so what he's saying is, what? Scott and I have played percussion in a marching band and like years ago. Um, but the one thing that is central truth is click. And when you're playing as a percussion unit, you are having, they are directed by the click. And so everything falls to a click. That's relatively speaking to studio musicians that also are a slave to the click. And so the click never goes away. So if you're thinking out there, yeah, I've heard about the click, I, you know, I practice with it, yeah, not so much. It's not really that important. Well, just to let you know, universally, it is true that the click is king. And so that's something that I, I love that you're bringing out. And it, may, it helps our understanding, Scott, by learning how to use tracks and clicks will kind of help unify the band together. So can we jump a little bit more into that? Yes. So what I would say is this, if you're bringing this brand new into your team, 
the first thing you need to do is you need to start slowly integrating it just within your rehearsal. One of the key things you can do, and one of the great things about these tools, as a matter of fact, our site offers is we have rehearsal tracks. And the rehearsal tracks are really nice because they give you a click, they give you the cues, they also give you the original song within it, but then on the other side of the mix, it gives whatever that instrument is. And it's a great tool to begin to introduce your team into how do you, re how do you rehearse with these. When you throw it at your team, you're going to just knock them out of the water. But to bring something like this into your rehearsals and start growing as a team together, quickly you'll find, first of all, how much better your timing will be, which is a huge plus. Because to be able to start a song in, a, in, in the right time and finish it in the right time, all of a sudden the dynamic and the power of your song has already changed and you're not having to fight with each other. So you'll see that change alone just happening if you use the click and the cues part of it. The cues part of it's great because it helps your team to be able to still stay aware as to where the song's direction go is going. Where, you know, it's there's that frustration when you're going through practice and you have to stop and go back and retake certain things because Either your bass player kind of had a rough day and they're at rehearsal. He just can't seem to remember, is the second chorus next or is it the third verse? Well, when you have those cues there, you have the ability to help your guys out and be able to know, okay, look, they don't have to stress about trying to remember that in their head. They've got a voice cue that's going to give it to them and let them know a couple of seconds before they come up, this is where we're going to. So integrating that into your rehearsal, I think, is key. Um, but quickly, after you feel like you're comfortable with it, you need to start bringing it into, it into your service. Now, here's what I would suggest. I think one of the things that's super... Well, sorry, we've uh, obviously got a couple of young ones that are hanging out yeah, with us no today. <laughs> they want to... Hey, this track is for all ages, by the way. So you want to train your younger worship teams, hey, this is it. That's the joys of, uh, of allowing us to have family involved, right? Being a father. <laughs> I haven't had him run through the door yet. I'm still waiting for that. No. <laughs> One word, nepotism. Okay, let's move uh, on. There you go. Okay, so, so let's do this. How about we jump into the track? Okay. All right, I got the screen open here. Uh, kind of walk us through it a little more. Okay, so in this track, um, this, is a, this is the version of Old Holy Night that's for Chris Collins. Intro, two, three, four. You notice it's in 6A, which is that nice roll speed. There with the faders, you have the ability to, to make your mixes needed with it. If the click or the cues are too high for you. Um. Verse, two, three, four. It's a pretty simple track. It's just got some simple, you know, the bass. Um, percussion to it. The drums will start to kick in about midway through the song. So we're still at the verse here. And what's cool about it is that you can see the progression of verse. If you want to jump to the chorus one, it's right here. So let's just say for all, you know, testing purposes, you'll select it. When you do that, it turns green. I got the same thing loaded up here and you can see on my um, iPad. And uh, this is all the songs that are selected in a file. And then here's the actual running mixer. So you wouldn't have both of these things. I'm just showing you as an example. I got two devices open. This is my iPad device. This is our regular computer. So you can download both Worship Band on, well, on three, desktop, computer, laptop, yep. and then phone and also iPad. Yep. So here's the chorus coming up. I know the rest of the band is bored right now. Sorry, just kind of hold out. You'll be okay. The, you're going you're gonna to play in a second. That's what you tell your musicians, right? Patience is a virtue. Hey, we're giving them coffee time, man. They hey, hey they're still in the green room. They haven't come out yet, you know? There you go. That's, where, that's usually where the drummer is anyway. 
So everybody's doing this. Okay, when's he showing? Uh, sound check already began 15 minutes ago. All right, okay, now he's coming through the door. Hey, hang on a second. He's getting the sticks. He's about to sit down. Please sit down. Here's the intro. Okay, so we just hired back the drummer and the percussionist. There you go. He's not doing very much. But just like any other track program, you can so you can solo here. So you hear what it And we want to bring in the uh, Tam. Here's the bass. Ah, uh, sure, let's bring in the strings. Okay, let's bring in the piano so that way they don't feel left out either, right? We're gonna let the, the, the pianist play that diminished chord because none of the band like it, right? All right, so let's say we're gonna just mute. Now what I love, hold on. What I love about the tracks is that you could, you could do exactly what I'm doing right here. So we got electric guitar playing. Put the pad in. Now that's a nice combination right there. Add percussion. Okay. All right. Now, what I love about all this, like with, you know, a lot of other companies do this, but what I love about the app is that if you are, like we have, you'd be surprised, worship teams, I mean, we have like one person worship teams out there. And I know it because we have some members in our university at Worship Team Training University. And I know one female in particular, she is the worship leader and the only other band member she has is a keyboard player. So easily, easily, you can have, the, if you have one musician or two, have the other person call up worship band and just kind of in a way you know not with every song but with one song you can kind of have them play dj i mean you can you know mute the the non-essential tracks that you that you want have the primary tracks that you want to play have those take over now what i like about the mixer is as you can see the mixer is very easily identifiable i mean there's no guessing you can pull down the faders up and down with no problem. Um, but, Scott, just to recap what you said, if I do want to play a guitar and I want to jump in, I don't, if I have my guitar with me, then I can go to the chord setting that you showed us. So as we're playing through each section, this is what other companies don't do. They show you the actual chord to the song. And, Scott, from what I understand from you, everybody who is... On an, iPad. on an iPad, and they are selected to the same Wi-Fi channel. It, it also works on Android, by the way. Okay, then it goes across all Android and all Apple devices. So if you got seven people in your team, all seven of you are seeing the same chart. That's in synchronization with the track. Yeah. And even if I go back as the leader, and I want to go back to change to verse two, or chorus, verse two. Then the whole track follows. Yep. So that's how easy this stuff really is. It's, it's not really hard to do it. Um, but the one thing that I recommend for you guys is try this at home. You got to look at this stuff like practice, okay? Here's my iPad right here. I got my tracks. If I'm at home, I want to practice this first. Don't use your rehearsal time to bring this in to the first deal, okay? Because you're gonna waste your band's time, you're gonna have to figure out how to do it, and you gotta think about too, the people in your team are seeing it the first time also. So it's gonna be like, what are we doing? And it's gonna take a lot of time for them to wrap their brains around it. So for you, 
as if you're the music director, lead guitar player, worship leader, and you're figuring this app out yourself, do this in your own practice time first and get it figured out. And then when you get to rehearsal, then you can show this to your team and like, hey, this is what's up. This is what we're doing. And then, you know, people can slowly digest it. And I just, my recommendation, try one song for the whole rehearsal. Don't do your whole worship set with it. Just one song because you're going to have someone in your team that, A, they don't know technology because they're how old, you know, two, uh, they may not be a person that knows how to play the click very well, okay? So you're going to have to set your expectations very low with your team. Now, for you guys watching this, this may not be new news. I don't know. But um, we're just trying to cover the basics so that way when you jump into this world, and maybe you are, you're a person watching this right now, you already do it. Awesome. But we're trying to help break things down because I'm telling you, most of your worship team, they have no idea what this pad, iPad does. They have no idea what loops are. Uh, then maybe they heard about it from you, but that's probably as far as it goes. So, Scott... What do you have to say about all of that? What do you have to say for yourself? Well, I tell you, um, no, honestly, on a on a on a serious note, man, I, I can't stress to you how much it is that you're actually not allowing your team to grow in certain areas without being able to use this tool because it does. I've had here's the thing: the church that I'm at right now, I've had older guys on our team like excel musically who literally were ready to kind of just retire themselves out of it. And I've told them, you know, listen, you you choose to retire yourself out. But when it comes down to this, yeah. like these guys, if they pick this up and it's amazing to see even how old cats who've been playing for a while, who've not been in this type of way of playing all of a sudden get into it. They embrace it and realize that man, it really it 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 makes their playing so much better, and there's a whole new enjoyment that they actually get out of it. So I, again, I just I can't I really can't stress to you how important this is. And here's the other part of it too: is that if we're going to keep up with how we can constantly kind of push the level of being able to bring. Um, a stronger and even better experience in our worship gatherings, you've got to start learning how to embrace these type of things because these tools really do help you set um, a presence that a lot of us are missing in our worship settings just by not being able to add some of these these easy pieces to our mix. Yeah, like Reese's Pieces. There you go. I don't know. We just saw Star Wars, so my mind is still on E.T. Um, so let's do this. What I want to do is another example of, um, you know, if I am that keyboard player and I want to play along with the track, um, first thing that you want to do is go back to the mixer setting. And if I'm like the, the one pianist or the one guitar player, I want to isolate which tracks I want to play with. So let's do that now. So let's say... I've muted everybody in the band, all right? The easiest thing right now that I can think of first is always go to percussion. Always go to your time and yep. your lock-in. And you can do your click if you want, but when it comes time for uh, worship, for the worship service, Scott, uh, tell us, how is that routed again where the band only hears the click but the congregation does not? Okay, so again, out of the headphones jack on, either, on whether it be your iPad or even if you're running this off of your, your laptop, out of your headphones jack, there are two channels that come out of that headphones jack. So basically what you're running out of it is a eighth of an inch jack that is a headphones jack. And one of the ways that you can know what that is, is that if you look at the end of the jack, you'll notice there's two little black lines on the jack. And that signifies that that's a stereo jack, which is sending two signals. On the other end of the cable are going to be two separate quarter inch jacks that only have one line on each of those jacks. Now those are mono jacks. What's important is that one of those lines, and you'll have to test it out, normally on a, on a cable it's going to be like a black and red. And so the red is your right channel, the blacks can end up being your left, or it may be like a red and white. White will be your left. 
on the right channel, and this is on every track, on the right channel, that is going to be all your instrumentation. So all of the enhancements, all of the add-ins that you're going to put to your band mix, that needs to go to your house mix. Okay. So tell us on the app, how do we access that? On the settings? Well, it's no, it's going to already come out that way. That's the thing, is that it will naturally, you don't have to adjust anything, it will naturally do that. Okay, so... Clicking cues, where you see clicking cues on your mixer, you don't even have to adapt it. It's already going to be there. Okay, but well, I'm just meaning, sorry, I'm just meaning from our audio output? Yes. If we click on settings, so that's what, that's what this does right here. Yes, which it's going to already be set up that way because okay. we naturally set the system up that way. So at the very top, we have the audio split. Yep. And then it says either default audio split, play stereo, or multi-channel output. And the one we want, the one we want is a default. Is that right? Yep. So default, and then our out settings right here is also set to default. Yep. So there's nothing more that you guys need to do, right? That's it. And that left channel, you're going to want to send that to your in-ear mix. Okay, and the left channel is where? Well, that's what it, it's already it's already sent out of that headphone jack. When you okay. set the default, it's already set up that way. Got it. All right, good. Okay, so it's literally a simple plug-and-play setup. Okay, cool. You guys get that? If you got uh, again questions, just type it in the video. Let us know. Um, Scott, how are you so far? Great. Hey, okay. we do want to throw a free track out there. If they go to the website to Guide Tracks. Okay. If you go to Guide Tracks, and when you go to Guide Tracks in the search bar on our on our on our page, there you go. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> um, you can actually type in free, and we have this actual track, Old Holy Night, for free right now. And where is it that I go? Is the, the search, you see the search bar up there in the, in the top corner on the right? On the right. Golly, why can't I get this right? Over to the right there. There we go. So right, right here? There you so go. Just type in free. Sorry. Yep. <clears throat> All right, there it is. Oh. You guys see that? It's nice and free for you. Okay. So and okay. note that every month we put up a different free track. We're doing this one for, obviously, the holiday seasons and stuff. <laughs> But always check us out each month because we're putting up new tracks and we also offer a free track of the month. All right, awesome. Hey, Les, what's going on, man? Les Jones, good to see you. And um, Love old Les. Yeah, Les, it's been a Probably while, man. He worked on this track for me. <laughs> Probably, he's down here. So sorry it took me a while to see you, Les. Um, also, Gord, um, will links to Scott and, this, and to this app be made available? Um, yeah, so we're... Where can we grab that link again? Um, let's find because that definitely is important. So let me hang on, guys. If you're watching real quick, Gord, thanks for asking about that. Um, so we're going to go to it's uh, Worship Song Band. Worshipsongband.com. Right. And how we got this app before? Uh, real quick, just kind of bear with us. And I'm going to put the link up there right now, in, uh in Facebook as you're watching this video. And guys, also if you're watching, listening by playback on audio. Just go to our Facebook page or just go to guidetracks.co. Um, best thing to do is to go to our Facebook page because that way we got everything there in one link and one through one video. So I got the downloadable link right here for you, Gord, and everybody else. And uh, you can put it here. Uh, download is free. Download Worship Band. And that's for, uh, uh, let's see, your... PC and um, plus devices. Okay. Yeah. So it's already there. Let's go ahead and get to the song, everybody, so we're not wasting your time because we know that your Christmas rehearsals are important this week, right? So let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, here we go. I've isolated again uh, other tracks. I got drums, percussion, tam. Um, sure, we can do bass, and let's say we're going to do strings, and uh, or maybe actually let's just do pad. So that way you can hear the piano, and I want to make sure that my level is up right here. Having a stretch. 
Oh, wait. That kind of hurt. Here we go. So our piano is right here. I'm going to put the track on. And you can, again, you can adjust the click how you want. I'm just going to put it low. And let's put an electric guitar just to get some movement, some rhythm. And here's the piano. I'm just making up a melody as I go. We need to put a bouncing ball in there for you. <laughs> Thanks. What are you trying to say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. Sorry about that. Here comes that chord. Okay, but you get the idea. Um, so, I mean, all I'm doing is I'm just simply playing along to the track. Now, this is, again, this is what I would do in a practice situation, not rehearsal. And simply as I do that, I'm just trying to make music with what the track is already doing. So, like what you were saying before, Scott, and we were talking about, just let the uh, app, let the click be your director so to speak yeah let it be your guide let it direct you through it all right awesome so um last last up what christmas ideas can you give us uh, christmas is just a few days away so what are some simple things people can do to help enter if they want to integrate this system and they got a simple worship service to do what do you recommend well man i tell you um i think Again, like you said, take take a song or two and stab at it. This is a real simple arrangement one. It's not real tough, so I think this would be a great one to try out because um, you can literally still have your own percussionist, acoustic player, your bass player. Um, literally, I mean, all you're really bringing in into it is going to be the strings, um, the pads into it, because um, obviously you're probably – and you're probably not going to have three keyboard players. I mean, if you do, wow, you need to spare some of those because <laughs> there, there's a there's a hurting for keyboard players in church music it, right now. It does um, happen. But uh, but at least you know those three those two tracks. If you want to put the percussion track, I mean, any on a regular Sunday, we normally have our pad in there. Um, I put the strings in there. If there's any type of motion sense or whatnot that are that are locked to a time. Those kind of sounds we keep in the track um, to make sure that they stay in time and that they're covered uh, if there's any percussion or loops. But we normally take out our bass track, our drum track, obviously, um, electrics. Sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll actually put some of the electric rhythm still in there if I have a strong lead player, but I, but I still need kind of the body of that electric rhythm tone in there, but I know I've only got one guy. What I'll do is help supplement that for him and make sure that the rhythm is still kind of layered underneath him for him. Yeah. Um, so those kind of, those th those kind of things are, are great to do. Uh, but again, I would, I'd take a stab at like this track. Um, we've got several on our site that, that we actually did from this particular album that, have, that are really some great arrangements. Joy to the world. Um, that Chris Tomlin does that has the unspeakable joy uh, chorus segment in it. Man, that's a great yeah. arrangement. Yep. Another one, if you're looking for a special, um, we did it last year because it had just recently came out. We're going to do it again this year, and that is Noel, which is by um, oh, wow. yes. uh, Lauren Daigle. We've yeah. got that on our site. It awesome. is a great track. Um, and it's one of those tracks Definitely. that – your piano player could play. This would be a great one to experiment. Your piano player can play 
Yeah. But there's a nice yeah. string arrangement and a little bit of percussion in it that maybe you just want that to sit in the track. Dude, that would be a great track to experiment with this for this season. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So that's that's what we're actually doing for our um yeah, Brandy Anderson, Facebook Live. Uh that's what we're actually doing for our um service as well. We we just did Noel this past Sunday and it was like it was just amazing. Oh, just awesome. Now hey, one of our top selling Christmas tracks right now is Carol of the Bells, which is by uh uh Kim um Kim Walker Smith. Walker. Yep. And we've got that on the site. That is a really killer arrangement. I'll tell you, if you want to try something that has kind of the impact of kind of like the Trans-Siberian track that everybody loves. Right. Well, their version of Carol of the Bells yeah. has a lot of that feel. It's not nearly as complicated. Right. And it's one that people can actually sing and still respond to. Um, but it's a great opening track if you're looking for something that will just really wow. kind of catch people right out of the gate. Wow. That's cool. Very cool. Great tracks that are up right up there right now for the season. Awesome. Well, Scott, man, thank you so much for sharing your time today, man, and coming on and showing us this fantastic app and also about what you're doing over at GuyTracks.co. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, be sure to check out GuyTracks.co. Scott Hussey right here. Get the track, Oh Holy Night, for free. And also, of course, the corresponding app, Worship Song Band, as you can get right here as you're watching through our Facebook Live. And if you're watching by our, if you're a member of Worship Team Training University, then you get full access to more stuff that Scott's going to be doing on our site, as well as other people as well. So you want to become a member. All you need to do is go to wttu.co and become a member. Scott is not only a member, but Scott is also one of our music producers for what we do here at Washington Training University. And so we're going to be creating courses, actually, to uh, go in to help you understand more about playing with loops, practice time, and stuff like that. We have a lot of great things planned for 2018. So become a member. Go to wttu.co slash enroll. And if you do that, I'm typing that up right now. If you do that today, uh, and if you email me, you know what, I can get you like a half off rate, but I got to know who you are. So all you need to do is either go to the website, click on the message button and message us or PM me through Facebook. Or if you're listening by audio podcast, go back to our website, WTTU.co and, uh, and I'll give it to you. No sweat. In fact, uh, if you also want a free trial, let me know about that too, and I'll hook you up. A lot of great things that we got going on, and uh, it's so awesome to uh, see, Scott, your relationship with Worship Song, and basically the relationship, what they do together, Scott, over at GuyTracks.co, provides the music for Worship Band Song. Uh, he's one of their contributors, one of their composers for this app, so that's the reason why you're seeing both these guys together because they work together. Hope that kind of clears things up. But go to guytracks.co, check it out. Be sure to go to wttu.co so that you can become a member too in enhancing your skill and nurturing your heart for worship leading. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Be sure to join us back after the New Year's Christmas break. We are going to play uh, Santa and also Jack Frost during this time. Uh, with some, with some well-needed vacation with all of our staff, Scott included. We will be back, I, I think, January the 9th. That's the second week of January. We will return with new shows on our Tuesdays, 11 a.m., and also Thursdays for members, as well as new Brown Bag Wednesdays like you're watching today, new webinars. We got new programs and new courses that we are rolling out for next year so be sure to become a member and get on our newsletter list so that you can find more about what's going on and how this can benefit you and your worship team love you guys so much thank you and yes we do say brandy and gourd our faithful members at wttu thank you guys watching facebook live uh we say to you scott thank you merry christmas happy new year brother good man Awesome. And all you guys out there as well, thanks so much for watching today on the playback and also live. We love you. Merry Christmas to you. May God continue to breathe in 
his will and his spirit into your worship team and your church to bring you closer to where he's called you to be. And also, blessings on your new year. Guys, we can't wait to see you afterwards, so we hope that everything goes great for you in your services, most of all in your heart and walk with Jesus. Thanks so much for joining us today. We love you, and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.